Hello everyone. Uh, I'll start from where we left last time. The part two, obviously, uh, in the part two of this uh, video series, I think I'll be making around four parts, and the fourth will be the last where I will be finishing the project. So this is like on these days, I think I will be done two third or three fourth of the progress. So yeah. Up from where we left last, uh, last time I think uh, we did uh, complete. I did complete the soldering the uh, buttons on the PCB and the parent PCB board. And I was talking about how to do the child or the daughter board, where I'll be having the Arduino in place. So I will show you where it is. So obviously I started planning out on in Inkscape, um, the mounting holes based on the parent board's mounting holes but uh, due to some like maybe some small degree alignment issues uh, this exact point didn't work so I had to waste uh, one or two plain board nothing was uh, designed on it so that's what my plan workflow was I first make sure the mounts are correct and then I do the soldering and the adding of the components, sockets and all. And this is the primary layout I decided. I will have the uh, two left potentiometers uh, uh, inputs here and two right potentiometer inputs here. And these are the row and a column for the uh, switches. And this is for the four-way uh, switch plus five-way five uh, joystick kind of switch. And this actually it's not three pin it's supposed to be two pin there will be uh, yeah two yeah there will be two of this for the toggle switches so one will be here and uh, toggle one and this will be the toggle two so this will be toggle two so there are two toggle switches so we'll have one neutral and uh, one for each switch and they will again be configured with the row and column configuration and over here I have designed to put the uh, transistors and uh, everything to control the LEDs and there will be a 2-pin uh, uh, LED power output here and 2-pin uh, for uh, connecting the battery or the 5 volt adapter connections to power the LEDs so the design was I'll be powering the LEDs uh, externally, but the intensity and uh, how when to switch on and off the LEDs will be controlled by the Arduino. And I am also planning to use one of the spare uh, knobs because in the game or the simulator uh, you can use three of these, but the fourth one is not kind of uh, mapped to any function. So I'll be using it to control the intensity of the LEDs. Earlier I had some other plan, but I obviously as I kept continuing, continue working, I tried to improvise a bit. Yeah, and obviously everything didn't go as planned also. Yeah, and uh, yeah, so let me uh, uh, run you through the progress so far. So this is where we left last time and uh, if you see yeah so I had the PCB and the parent PCB with the switches soldered so things were all good then after this I started working on the uh, this thing the child board or the, uh, the board where all the inputs will be coming from the parent board. So this is uh, soldering the uh, what do you call a dip for the Arduino so that I don't have to shoulder the Arduino. I can repurpose it elsewhere when I don't use this uh, module or this uh, panel. So this is a dip on which I'll be uh, switching. Uh, means technically inserting the Arduino. And here are like obviously. Uh, once I started uh, working with the wiring, I realized something I should have done better, and I keep I had to improvise on the way. And initially, uh, the way the wiring was done, 
uh, there were a few hiccups like uh, I'll explain like obviously here I had to like uh, connect I had to have to have more than uh, two connections uh, to a particular column of the row channels so ideally I should have uh, extended a few more uh, connecting points and then solder them much uh, you know at ease or much uh, conveniently but I have to put everything together and uh, this was not the best of the design I should have gone for but obviously as I kept working I keep improvising and uh, as I keep progressing a uh, much better way of soldering or you no know, doing all this uh, writing design came to my mind and I keep changing them as needed and obviously ideally I should have used a PCB board for all this but uh, means a printed circuit board rather than wiring this manually because wiring manually leaves uh, like technically makes uh, lots of uh, leaves behind lots of room for error and uh, luckily I was after each and every uh, group shoulder I was checking the connections with the multimeter and making sure that everything is uh, working there is no short nor uh, uh, unconnected uh, wires or unconnected joints or the points yeah and it was very tedious like most of the time I had to spend just wiring this up and uh, I realized that if I have edge uh, a PCB board it would have been better I did have the etching uh, chemicals earlier but what happened was uh, it was uh, it's highly corrosive the material and I for some reason uh, had to dispose them off because you need a very well ventilated place and a proper way of disposing those uh, I think it's fer ferric chloride or ferric oxide for what but it's very corrosive like, so it should not be done inside the house ideally uh, that's the reason I didn't go for the PCB approach but maybe next project I have to come up with uh, an idea of how to add the PCB or get it uh, manufactured or something but that would have saved me lots of time because this entire process of uh, wiring the PCB is, is quite time consuming so moving ahead obviously just a uh, few progress I made yeah things was quite clumsy uh, as you can see in the videos just to hold the wires together and yeah so some places I have uh, fast forwarded the videos so that uh, I don't spend much time showing something which is not uh, that relevant uh, so these are a few of the, uh, of the yeah. so here obviously again it's quite time consuming soldering each and every uh, wire to the joints So we have a few of the and uh, yes, this uh, daughter board took quite a lot of time because everything is quite um, tight and some places are very uh, difficult to walk around. And this is uh, the how the daughter board looks like. And if as you can see over here, we have the uh, inputs for the potentiometer and uh, let me just back a bit and this is for the uh, LED output where I'll be connecting the in uh, LED power and this is for the external power supply these are for the two toggle switches as mentioned earlier and these are for the four way four plus one way uh, joystick and this is the column and the rows and these are the uh, transistors and these are resistors to drive that circuitry and on the two rows for the toggles I had to put a diodes uh, the reason is because they are always on toggle and I don't want it to conflict with any other switches so uh, that's why I had to put two diodes on uh, this uh, the row pin of the toggle switch yes, now we can move ahead Okay, now comes I then uh, super uh, like glued all the LEDs 
where it's supposed to be and then it's LED need to have a separate uh, 180 ohms uh, resistor so yeah so I did again position of the LED and the resistors I did plan out properly but once I started working I realized that things might there might be a better way of working or arranging them and minimize the amount of shoulder I need to do so I had to uh, improvise uh, on the fly and make few changes on the fly and yeah so yeah and it's quite messy below if you see here and as I keep progressing I realize there are better way of uh, dealing with this uh, connection of all this so and I was actually shouldering each and every LEDs first and then also testing uh, the LEDs so that make sure that uh, during shouldering I didn't short or damage the LEDs so as you can see after each shoulder I will be testing uh, I made a like a like mini LED tester which is connected to a LiPo battery So you can see here, yeah, the LED works. Then I moved to the next LED and it was quite time consuming. I think I had around 17 or 18 LEDs, which is uh, quite uh, a lot, but I need to have a really good backlit. So because of that, I have to use the, and this is the, so now as you can see over here, yeah. Uh, to avoid too many wirings uh, I use the long legs of the LEDs and resistors to create a circuit on its own and it works out quite well because it saves me lots of soldering points and also uh, the mass of wires I will be having, having. and uh, for the ground and the orbit of the line of the LEDs uh, and the resistors all the resistors are connected to the 5 volt line and uh, all the, uh, say, uh, the negative point of the uh, LEDs are connected to the ground and all grounds are connected together one way or the other so, so only the switches I'll be wiring them individually but that's uh, okay so all this uh, idea was never planned, it came yesterday on the fly while I was working and that's how I went ahead. So, yeah, so this is the, uh, everything is ready. The, child board is perfectly ready I still haven't tested the child board but I'll be testing it today uh, but there it's uh, nothing more to be done on the child board except for labeling and uh, on the parent board only the uh, switch uh, connections and the IO for the switches are pending plus obviously I have to uh, work on the toggle switches and the rotary but ap apart from that the uh, circuitry wise I uh, from the parent board I think only the uh, switch uh, switches connections to each row and columns are pending so maybe that I'll do today or tomorrow yes and when I get time and yeah these are the different views different angles and this is where I'm testing the LEDs so it works all the LEDs lit as expected show you in a dark room photograph also which will be really nice to see and the reason why I use a wider uh, acrylic on top is to diffuse this light so this is how it looks in the dark room and obviously there will be uh, buttons coming over this acrylic buttons so they will again enhance uh, tra uh, transmit the light further upward towards it uh, and every keys and yeah basically this is uh, uh, so where I have so far and uh, yeah so the only pending part is uh, the wiring for the 
switches and the finishing of the other toggles and other toggles and the rotaries are not that uh, difficult won't take much time but yeah the wiring has to be very carefully done for the switches and uh, once it's done i think uh, it will be the project will be done the only part left will be uh, the manual part which will be creating this uh, cylindrical uh, buttons and the square uh, uh, keypad buttons also and uh, rocker switch so all those will be cut out from acrylic for this i got i actually this is a 12 to 13 mm hole and uh, i ordered a 10 mm uh, rod but uh, somehow 10 mm instead of 10 mm i got 14 mm rod so i have to now grind all them down to 10 mm to fit into these holes and for this uh, uh, switches buttons i think it's easy because i ordered a 10 or 10 mm or 11 mm uh, rod square rod so i just have to cut polish and that's it nothing much to do but only this uh, circular ones will be taking some time and then i'll be maybe spray paint it with black and do the carving of the lettering on it and after that it should be done i guess yeah so i think uh, today i went a little longer and yeah, as and when I make further progress, I will keep updating. But uh, this is what I have so far, and I hope you all like it. And please feel free to comment or advise or give suggestions on how I should be doing things. I am open to receive any advice or suggestion on how to do the uh, pen. This what to use. Uh, I was thinking of using some automobile uh, black spray pen, but. Uh, if there is anything much better to paint on the acrylics uh, please free to guide me I'll be more than happy because I have never not even planned how to do the coloring I have no material yet I have to acquire them so it'd be nice if I can get uh, the ideas and also how the best way to do the lettering because on these panels I'll be having the like ICP or brightness or contrast there'll be some lettering some word written on the panels which is supposed to be revealed from like technically which are not supposed to be painted so uh, what's the best way to cut a stencil out and then spray paint and then remove the stencil or is there a way better way of doing that any advice suggestions are mostly most welcome and i appreciate it so until the next uh, stage uh, and hopefully that will be the last one so keep uh, watching all the channel and hopefully i'll do the last one maybe live or something but uh, yeah until then uh, thank you everyone have a great day bye bye